This is where the industry has got to, I suppose. Planar headphones that barely weigh anything. Beautifully designed and ergonomic, and you can take it out with you. I'll just finish reviewing these. Uh, now, time to concentrate on something else. Uh, so, a special thank you to Oshida Hi-Fi for sending this unit in for review. Now, I am not a novice to Tin Hi-Fi. I owned the Tin Hi-Fi T2, T2 Plus, T3, many moons ago when it was all the rage because they produced some of the industry's best at the best price point. It was absolutely ridiculous and a wild time. Going back to 2017, 2016, it was quite a while ago anyway. To be honest with you, with the conception of the channel and the way the channel's been progressing and the way we went, we concentrate most of the time on the high end spectrum of headphones and IEMs. But with the recent Litsure S12 review, these little babies here, at $149, that blew my freaking mind. Oshida Hi-Fi contacted me and said, are you interested in reviewing these? Um, the name rang a bell, Tin Hi-Fi. So I said, yeah, why not? Let's see what the deal is. So shall we have a look together and see what we get? We get a very understated box, very Apple-esque as usual. And these are right off the bat, $69.99. So they're very cheap. They're like a third of the Apple AirPod Pro line uh, or half the price of a normal Apple AirPod. So you get this understated cardboard boxes with a nice etched design here, you know, it's, it's pretty nicely done. Um, in reminiscent of the TT2 and T3, I think this box might actually look better. Um, and then you lift it. Who is that magnetic? No, it's pressure held. Does it come in? No, that's pretty nicely done. Well done. Setting this aside, you got a nice card. Okay, so let me move some of this stuff back here. You don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we get this nice card and we get some instructions. Okie dokie. Very good. Put that there, put that there. I'll see you. And then you get this nice velvet lid. Hey, that's pretty cool. You can put our IEMs in this as well. That's not bad at all. Okay, put that on top of that. We don't need that for now. Now, these are the IEMs. They're presented like this in this velvet lined box. Very nice. If we take out the drivers, here we are. Now, these are light. Let's take out the other one as well. Put these aside here. Yeah, these are really nice. Very, very light. We will have a look at that momentarily. And then inside the case, we get a cable. Let's put that over here. And inside the bag, we get a pouch. Let's put that here too. Okay, let's dispense with some of this stuff. Let's have a look at this first, shall we? So this is a oxygen-free copper cable. We have a termination of 3.5 single-ended. Okie dokie. And please don't be MMCX. Please don't be MMCX. Please don't be, oh, fantastic. We have two pin. This basically makes this easy to replace, easy to disconnect and without having the need to break the drivers when you're disconnecting. I despise MMCX. So Tin Hi-Fi, you already get a pass from me for moving away from MMCX to two pin. This is definitely a win. Let's connect this. Simple as that. MMCX is a freaking nightmare. I've actually broken drivers because of the stiffness and the annoyance of uh, that stupid connector. I hope it dies in a fiery death and I hope it never ever comes back. I can't stand MMCX. Okay, so these shells are ultra light. They're made of a resin. What's really convenient is if you look on the underside of this IEM, you got the contour bit that kind of goes inside this part of your ear. You've got this part that sits nestle exactly inside your ear here and if we get a couple of tips on this this unit comes with three sets of rubber tips 
three sets of extra rubber tips and it comes with three sets of foam tips. I'm going to use my own tips because those I tried did not fit my ears very well and I could not get a proper seal. You'll have to do a lot of experimentation to actually find the right tips that sounds the best for your ears. Sometimes the manufacturer tips just doesn't fit your ear canal. It's, it's part of the game unfortunately. You need to own like 50 tips or something if you're planning to roll IEMs. I use SpinFit tips for these ones because as you can see, the spin fit tips here are a completely open bore because the bore on these IEMs is pretty wide. You do not want to impeach this bore here like this. So it needs to be like that and like that. They are really nice IEMs, honestly. Um, ultra light. I mean, if we take out the, where are you? Come to me. This one is from Lit Shore. They are a much smaller housing, but these are made of metal. These cost three times as much. These are, I believe, $149. Well, slightly, slightly uh, less than three times the price, but these are metal. These are a resin, like I stated. These are 3D printed. These are much, much bigger. But on the uh, S12s, you do not get the actual shape of the inside of the ear. This you do, and this is comfortable. Not that the S12s are not, but honestly, when I changed from S12s to Tin T3 Pluses, I always wanted to come back to these because they were so much lighter and they fitted my ear ergonomically. Well, look, I mean, let me show you. So these fit like so. As you can see, these take up the entirety of the inside of my ear and they lay flush. These are really well designed for the human ear. Um, I'm genuinely surprised, actually, in fact, that there have been three or four hundred dollar IEMs without this level of detail in regards to the underside of the shell so that it can sit nicely inside your ear. So comfort, a win. Uh, the cable is okay. I mean, it's a $70 IEM. There is absolutely no audiophonics, and when you wear it, it completely disappears. But it's an ultra-thin cable. And in fact, I've been using the S12 cable. This is a beautiful cable. I mean, you can tell that you're paying a lot more money. Look at, look at this thing. I mean, I've had IEMs that cost like two grand without this type of cable. So I've been using the... Um, cable from the S12s on a regular basis, but the cable on this has absolutely no audiophonics, it's very light, it's very ergonomic, sounds pretty alright. But you get a little bit more performance when you change the cable, so if you do have another cable line around, try it and see what difference you find. Okay, so the technical specifications of this IEM, using a 10mm liquid crystal polymer driver, this is a single dynamic driver IEM. Previously, they liked to use their balanced armatures on a regular basis and balanced armatures with dynamics. Um, and honestly, this is more coherent. Um, we're gonna talk about the sound momentarily, but uh, I think I prefer this than the balanced armature sound they were previously going for, like the Tin T2 Plus. I was not really a big fan of those. These are better in every way. The frequency response of this IEM is 10 Hz to 20 kHz, so a nice range, but they are 32 ohm. Bear that in mind. You do need a little bit of power to drive them properly. Sensitivity is pretty good, it's 105 dB. Also, Tin Hi-Fi is using their double cavity um, implementation for the driver, and the driver is sort of like nestled inside. I believe they've been using this sort of construction uh, for a while now, so coherency on this IEM and lack of bad resonances is almost non-existent. I am absolutely shocked. Let's get some of the housekeeping out of the way. These drivers do require at least 30 hours of burning because they did go through quite a change. That dynamic driver requires time to loosen up and flex. And I found there was a drastic change between the first time I put it in my ears, which I thought was, meh, these are all right. Not bad, whatever. And I forgot about it. I put it on the burning rig and completely just disregarded it because I was using the Shure S12s um, on a regular basis. I mean, these are my walk around IEMs. When I just don't care about analytical listening, I want a bit of fun. These are beautiful. These are uh, very bottom heavy, sub bass, mid bass heavy, beautiful lush mid range. 
um, absolutely extraordinary what you get for um, the performance these days from these Chinese manufacturer IEMs. I mean, 10 years ago, these level of performance were unheard of at these sort of price points. Like, this is absolutely insane. This is already a very, very strong start. Let's talk about the sound of these IEMs. The overall sound signature of these IEMs is a tonally balanced, dark presentation with nice treble extension. Little warmth in the mid-range, but overall pretty balanced. It's a very smooth sound in IEM. In fact, you can throw any genre of music at these IEMs when you're walking around, shuffling your library and not get any jarring effect. So for example, if you're going from hip hop to EDM to rock, the frequency response will not permit any harshness, any fatigueness, even at loud volumes. It's tuned extraordinarily well. In fact, I think the tuning has exceeded the lid short S12. And these, I thought these were going to be the 2022 equipment of the year price to performance ratio, genuinely. But these are more comfortable. The tuning is better. The tuning, for those of you who are familiar with a ZMF sound, is the sort of tuning an atrium has. Stop. Not quality, not comparisons, just the tuning. That dark tuning sound signature with a lush mid-range. That's what you get here. That's the tuning they've gone for. Non-fatiguing, slightly laid back. Smooth sound signature. The bass region definitely uh, the S12 takes it, but we will do that uh, comparison in the frequency response. But this is a pleasing IEM that costs the same as a pizza for your Friday night. So I recommend foregoing the pizza on a Friday night and actually trying this out because genuinely I am impressed. So with that, let's break down the frequency response. So, using a track that we've used uh, on this channel before, Electric Bear, Contact. This is a track that concentrates on the bass region and the sub-bass region extraordinarily well, and it focuses on this area. The sub-bass on the plus is audible, it's there. It gives nice support to the mid-bass, but it's neither elevated nor overly emphasized. There is no shelf on the sub-bass region. Um, as we're climbing up to the mid bass, we find that this track usually is very, very sub bass heavy and mid bass heavy, that there is good separation and distinction between these two parts of the frequency response. The mid bass and the sub bass do not bleed into each other to create this overly bucket shaped sub bass region and bass region. No, you get punch from the mid bass and you get sub bass rumble. Um, but it's in a neutral manner. There is no elevation. There is a little bit of elevation in the 125 hertz of the mid bass, depending on the track you're using and the way it was mastered. This is actually apparent, especially on pop tracks. Not overly so on rock and EDM, but pop tracks, for some reason, does come across a little mid bass heavy. Um, but for rock and for EDM, it actually defines itself quite well and separates itself from the sub bass region. It's more of a yes, I am aiming for the reference sound, unlike the S12s, where this is aiming for let's hit you with a low end, Let, let's do the mid bass and the sub bass fun sound signature. No, this is a little bit more neutral. Um, separation of instruments in the sub bass and the mid bass category is okay. I mean, it's it's a $69 IEM, so expectations. You get good presentation and you get good identification of what the instrument is. But if you start really listening analytically to these types of IEMs in this sort of category, with the same scrutiny you would give something to a, like a, an old VX or something insane like a unique melody mess and stuff, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. But if your expectations are low and if your expectations are of the category 
agree. Okay, I've got a $50 IEM in my ears. It will blow your freaking mind because what's actually been done here is shocking. Climbing up to the upper base region, it never feels thin or fatiguing. It never feels like it's bleeding into the lower mids and it never feels like it's not supporting the treble region. I don't know how they've done it. It's, it's very well balanced. Um, in the bass region, I would say my gripe would be with the mid bass for certain genres because it does come over a little elevated more than I would like. But I think that might be a restriction of the actual housing and uh, materials and stuff and the driver. Um, but for well controlled genres like rock or EDM, it does separate itself very well from the sub bass and the upper bass region. Like I mentioned, it's actually quite nicely focused and presented. Mid-range is very smooth on these IEMs. Now, I think they exceed the S12s in mid-range. They are open, slightly forward, lush, and separation of instruments in this region is well separated and well defined. And it does step kind of like away a little bit compared to the S12s. The S12s does seem to be a little bit more violent and a bit more closer. These are a bit more open in the mid-range. And what's really, really impressive, from the mid-mids up to the treble region, these exceed the Lidshaw S12s, these being my benchmark. Genuinely, for these caliber of IEMs at these price points. Anything from $50 to about $500. S12s have been the benchmark on the channel. Base region, I genuinely would give it to the S12s over these, but these are more neutral than these. So it just depends what you're looking for. But if you're looking for fun and really well performing, these are a planar, uh, I would choose the S12s personally. But twice the price, plus a little bit more. But mid-range to the treble region, it's smoother on these. It's well defined. So mid mids are neutral. Lower mids is neutral. It rises nicely. Upper mid range. Now this is where the ear gain situation happens. If it's overly much, it can become fatiguing and congested and shouty. No, neither of these are approaching any of that. They're very smooth. This is a little bit more brighter in that region. It's a little bit more forward by a couple of dB where you get a bit more clarity and a bit more elevation, but in a smooth manner. Definitely more engaging, especially if you're a mid-range freak. Um, for me, because I'm so obsessed with the mid-range, if the mid-range is lush and slightly forward and well controlled and kind of a smooth rise, I immediately take note. And these have been more fun for me in this region. Definitely. Um, the treble region is laid back on this unit. From the mid treble, low treble, and the upper treble, it's definitely taking a step back so that it's presenting this dark sound signature. It reminds me of the atrium tuning a lot, and I'm really impressed. Genuinely, I like this frequency response. I think this has been one of my favorites, this sort of kind of like a dark sound signature where it feels like everything's lit up with a white light from behind and every instrument's kind of like really popping within the stage. It's kind of surprising. And unfortunately, the treble regions where the S12s kind of falls apart a little bit, I mean, it's okay for on the go and stuff, but these are definitely smoother. These are definitely more tuned better. And these are definitely more separated better. So with that, let's talk about timbre separation and detail and transparency. Timbre wins over the S12s, hands down. Timbre is really good on these units. Uh, genuinely surprised by that. Um, from vocals, from instruments, from textual information, it takes it over the S12. Um, everything seems a little more realistic and you're stepping away from the actual general consumer AirPod Pro line of IEMs. For example, if you have the AirPod Pros in your ear, it's immediately apparent that these are far superior for sound quality. Immediately. They sound bigger, they sound more defined, they sound more separated, they sound more realistic. Resolution I would give to the S12s over this. Um, resolution on this is just, yeah, it's okay. 
it's it's not overly transparent it's not overly high resolution um but because the tuning is so well done and it's kind of not neutral balanced it's you take it and you don't mind detail again is okay these are not an iem like i stated that's uh, defining a genre of analytical listening where you're looking for every single nuance of the track no these are giving you a beautiful wonderful presentation of the track in a fun way while you're walking around and even if you lose these you're not going to be crying for example if you lose like an anol vx or a mad 24 or iear z1 hour or something and these are ultra comfortable like really really comfortable so what are some of the drawbacks of this iem being 50 dollars well for me, I did not like the tips, um, so I used my own tips. The spin fit tips work so much better and actually helps with the tuning a lot more than the stock tips, the silicon and the foam tips. The foam tips don't sound too good on this. They sound a little bit muffled. They kind of kill the treble region, but these spin fit tips really do help this IEM. And for me personally, in my use case, using it as stock with the stock cable and the stock tips, it's it's a nice IEM, it's okay. For $70, you really can't go wrong, but I think these IEMs could be eked out performance-wise a little bit better by putting the spin fit tips on if you have it in your collection. And also because, um, like I stated, I have the S12 higher quality cable at hand, I and these are two pin as well, I use this. And I use these tips and these have replaced my S12s because of the balanced tuning and the timbre, honestly. Um, and that smooth treble region, I genuinely prefer these. If it means using the cable and the tips from my own stock, so be it. But for the comfort and for the tuning and for the timbre, a win. Okay, finally, how do these perform at $70, $69.99, compared to a $2,000 IEM like the Enol VX? $2,500 actually. Comfort, I think the Enol VX might be the most comfortable IEM I've ever put in my ears, so yes. I don't think it's a fair comparison. Um, tuning wise, these are tuned really well. I would put both of those IEMs in my ears and not feel discomforted, but obviously, there is so much ways to go in regards to rev resolution, technicality. But if you're planning to buy a general consumer IEM, you should stop and consider these because you are now stepping into the audiophile world with these at a very decent price point and using the IFI Go Blue because it can drive these 32 ohm IEMs pretty easily. This is pretty powerful. I drove the Focal Stelio with it for a very long time and it did a flipping good job for on the go when you're just wandering around the house or in the office and stuff. Um, 3.5 and 4.4, so you can actually use these balanced with these if you've got the cable or single-ended. It's been a wonderful experience in the mornings, genuinely. And this setup will set you back $70 and $270. Honestly, where we have got to in 2022 in regards to audio is absolutely ridiculous. I would take these over my Shure SE 215s, 315s, 415s, any day of the week. And they used to cost me like two, three hundred, five hundred, six hundred. This is $70. The industry has moved on and the IEM revolution is absolutely insane. Okay, so what are some of the caveats of this? If I was hoping for better, I would choose a nicer cable, a little bit thicker and a little bit kind of more pleasing like this one. But the fact that this doesn't have any audiophonics doesn't really keep its shape and it disappears when you wear it. I can't complain too much about it. Accessories, I definitely would prefer something solid um, because these resin shells, I'm a bit worried about. They're so light and I think they might be a little bit fragile. Um, 
Throwing this in your pocket with keys and stuff, I don't feel very happy about. Um, so maybe, maybe not exactly leather like this, but something solid a little bit so you can throw it in a backpack. That would have been really nice. Maybe for the next one. Uh, in regards to shape and ergonomic design, I don't think they could have done any better if they tried. In regards to weight, I don't think they could have done any better if they tried. This thing doesn't weigh anything. And the fact that it's two pin and you can throw any custom cables on there very easily, and it's not recessed either. Some people complain that it's not recessed, so that the adapters from um, cables and stuff can stick out. No, I, I, don't, I don't agree with this because any cable can fit. You don't have to worry about the adapter end of the cable. Well done, Tin High Pie. This is really good. I'm genuinely surprised and I wholeheartedly recommend it, especially at the price point it's coming in. Let's talk about the scores. Ergonomics and design at $69.99. Five tigers out of five. This is genuinely amazing. Accessories, uh, two tigers, yeah. Uh, I mean, you get a lot of tips and stuff, but I prefer something that would keep the IEM safe. I don't think this will, unless you carry the box with you, and the box is a little bit large, you know? I mean, you can throw it in your backpack. It's got this nice velvet lining. Two, three tigers, I'd say. Because you, you can carry this with you, um, sort of in a backpack yeah three tigers it's not too bad um most importantly sound quality for this price point four tigers i would have preferred a little more detail a little more micro detail and a tiny bit less mid bass especially for pop songs because that's what i listen to early in the morning when i'm not kind of analytical listening on big systems and stuff like behind me when i'm just having fun you know tiny tiny smidgen by about 1 db or something uh, if you've got a qdelix the app will contain a dsp correction uh, eq you can drop the mid bass around 125 hertz by about half a db but for every other genre it seems pretty damn good overall i give these four tigers out of five without any reservations this is this is wonderful where the industry have got to where our new members can join the hobby is absolutely ridiculous. I like these a lot, genuinely. For the comfort and the tuning, they have replaced my S12s and I, I, I love these things. I think they're freaking amazing. Thanks again, Oshida Hi-Fi. It's genuinely appreciated that you guys want to put Convince Me Audio on the tool. If you decide to get these IEMs, all the information and the links will be down below. And if you like early reviews like this, if you want to get access to the reviews before anyone else, before it's released on YouTube, consider joining our Patreon. And you can join us on the private Telegram chat where we discuss these sorts of IEMs and everything else that gets brought into the channel before the review gets released. You get my early impressions and we get to discuss how these sorts of equipment are performing. If not, consider subscribing, pressing the notification icon so you don't miss these sorts of reviews. Otherwise, you can join us in the public Telegram chat where we can shout and yell about audio all day. I will see you next time. Laters.